five reasons why women should never pursue a man. In this video, we're going to dive into what are those reasons why it's so critical for you to understand them if you actually want men to come to you, if you want a man to chase, pursue, prioritize you, and if you want to stop having men ghosting on you, cheating on you, losing attraction, losing interest, pulling away, then this is the video for you. So now, comment below if you are done with men not chasing you, not pursuing, not investing in the, the relationship, and you feeling like you have to do all the work, say, I'm ready in the comments below. So hi, I am Broderick Boyd, uh, or you call me Brody, and I've been helping single men for over 13 years to attract the right woman for them. So I have a unique perspective into what makes the male brain tick. So we're going to be going deeper into that in this video to get you some insights into that. So go ahead and like, share, subscribe to this channel if you want to get more powerful videos on this topic and other topics related to attracting quality men. Share it with your girlfriends and like it if you like anything in this video, any tips, the background, the little painting over there that we got, then please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. And also make sure to watch for a special bonus in this video, a secret bonus on why men become passive in relationships, what actually makes that happen. So let's go ahead and dive in with powerful secret number five, reason number five, why you should never pursue a man. And that reason is because it destroys long-term polarity and attraction. So polarity is really the difference between masculine and feminine energy. And that is biologically the only thing that sustains long-term attraction between people. And between a man and a woman, between a uh, romantic partners, and it happens because of the differentiation in roles and energy that creates that chemistry that says, "Hey, let's reproduce. Hey, let's have a family." That is what is created on an unconscious level when you create that feminine masculine polarity with your man. And if you are the one taking the masculine role, if you are taking charge, it becomes impossible for him to take that role. So that is why it is so important not to destroy that long-term polarity and attraction by you taking it away from him because he can never step into it. Now, this reminds me of a story actually of one of our clients uh, when we just started working together. She was flying to go see a man. There was a man she was interested in. She'd been talking to him back and forth. He had visited her in California and she said she decided to plan a trip to go to Chicago, where he was living, to visit him. And this was already putting her into a more chasing role, right? A more pursuing masculine role. And so the problem was when she got to Chicago, she had taken that initiative, right? She had gone for it. She's like going for the relationship. When she got there, they hang, they, they actually hung out together a couple times. Um, but the problem was he wasn't attracted to her. He lost that attraction. He lost the spark when she came. And he couldn't even kiss her. He wouldn't even kiss her when she was visiting for like, I think it was two or three days. Um, there was no physical attraction, no physical intimacy. They were connected as friends. They talked, but that passion, that, that, that spark had gone away because she had taken that role. So very important. So don't fly across the country to chase your man. Don't drive to him. Uh, don't overly invest to make things happen. And especially don't set up the date and try to initiate and set up um, uh, a meeting like that, because that'll definitely put you into that masculine role. Next, powerful reason number four is how a relationship starts is generally how it will continue. So if the relationship starts with you taking the masculine role, you initiating, you making everything happen, don't expect that that's going to magically change at some point that all of a sudden, once you're married, or all of a sudden, once you're engaged, or once you're exclusive, or at any point in the future, all of a sudden, magically, he's going to start taking that role, and he's going to start putting in the effort, putting in the work, taking the mask and role, because it's generally not going to happen. You know, 99.9% .9 chance, it's not going to happen. You know, people rarely change. That's pretty common knowledge. But relational dynamics rarely change as well. So think of it as like in the beginning stages of meeting a man or dating a man or being romantic with a man, you're laying that foundation for how your relationship is going to look like long term. Now, people often get into the illusion, and I think generally 
a lot of women that we've seen that we work with get into this illusion as well that someday he's going to change. Once I just love him enough, once I do enough for him, once I, um, once we're committed, once once we have a kid together, oh God forbid that. Now he's going to shift, and now he's going to start you know treating me with more respect. Now he's going to start coming to the relationship. Generally, does not happen. So do not expect it to. And so make sure in the beginning moments you are are on point with you taking that feminine role, you owning your femininity so that he can take that masculine role. He can actually start investing. And if he's not doing it, then it's not the right relationship for you because it's generally not going to change. Don't expect it to change five years down the road. That's going to be the way it always is. You have to have that mindset so you avoid getting hurt. Now, this reminds me of a story actually with my first relationship with a girl I fell in love with in college. And um, our relationship started off very dramatically. Um, you know, her coming to my apartment at one in the morning in tears because she was depressed and her ex-boyfriend was still texting her. And there was just a lot of emotional issues and drama. And of course, that's how the relationship started. And that's exactly how the relationship ended as well. Um, so a lot of drama, not nothing on, you know, no fault of hers, but the relationship, I mean, you know, she had issues to work out. I had issues to work out for sure. But the relationship dynamic was pretty much set in the beginning, which this was a dramatic relationship. This was a relationship where I needed to be the supporter. I needed to care for her. And of course, that that didn't really change throughout our relationship. There were small improvements, but for the most part, that was exactly how the whole relationship was for two and a half years. So don't expect it to change because it probably will not. Now, if you haven't joined yet our free Magnetize Your Man Dating Support Facebook group, I highly recommend joining that now. You can go to magnetize, go to mymfbgroup.com or go to Facebook and type in Magnetize Your Man. You'll be able to find the group there. We're having all these juicy conversations in there and be able to talk about this specifically for you as well. Get support with where you're at. So I highly recommend joining that community. It's amazing. We have almost over 5,000 women in there right now. Highly recommend that. So let's go ahead and dive into powerful reason number three which is it trains him to be passive and not to invest. So if you're chasing him, if you're pursuing in the relationship, you're actually training him to be passive, to say, well, why would I change? It's coming to me. You're doing everything for me. You're initiating. You're texting all the time. You're calling all the time. You're making the decisions. Why should I bother? You know, I, I'm getting a free ride here. You know, there's that old saying, why buy the milk when you can get, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? So it's the same principle here is if you're so busy giving away the milk for free in terms of you're the one investing, you're doing all these things, you're initiating, why would he feel like he needs to invest anymore? Why would he need to do anything? And uh, it actually really reminds me of a story where I dated a woman when I was in Hawaii. This was after my first breakup, after I had a deep depression, worked on myself, hired my own dating coach. I ended up moving to Hawaii from Corvallis, Oregon. And I started really just dating, meeting new women. And I remember meeting this one woman I, I dated for a while in Waikiki before, actually it was the last woman I dated before I met my wife, Antia. And this woman I dated, she had told me actually when we first met, she told me basically her relationship history, recent relationship history, where she was um, what you might call a cougar. <laughs> I think she would call her, she called herself that. I, I don't quite remember. But, you know, um, she was a bit older and she liked to date younger guys. I was pretty young at the time. There was like maybe a 15 year age difference between us, maybe more. I don't remember. Um, and she told me the last guy she dated, she actually bought him a Jeep, <laughs> she bought him a car. Um, and of course that didn't end up lasting, right? He ended up, I don't know why they broke up. I mean, I know why they broke up. I don't know how they broke up. Um, and of course we had a similar dynamic, me and her, because she liked to be in this masculine. She was a very successful, uh, doctor and, um, you know, she would take me out to eat, buy champagne, uh, take me on, on car rides, which I loved you know, tours of the island. And back then, and, and at that point in my life, I was actually experimenting with just, yeah, sure. Let's see what, you know, what I, what I can receive. Right. I was in a point where like, what, you know, what can I receive? What will women, um, a woman I'm dating, you know, or that's, I'm attracted to her that we have some going on. What would she, you know, actually be willing to do in our relationship, you know? And I was kind of exploring that place. Um, so 
I was working on myself. I was not quite fully in my strong masculine. Um, but yeah, of course, it was an interesting relationship. It was, you know, somewhat enjoyable relationship, but actually she ended up losing attraction for me. She ended up losing attraction in the relationship as she should because she was doing all the work. I wasn't doing really much of the work and uh, it didn't, it, it, it ended, you know, she broke up, broke it off. Um, so again, she was training me to not invest. I, you know, uh, out of no fault her own, I, that's just the dynamic we had. And so you want to avoid that and um, you want to be able to create that passion and chemistry by not creating that with the guys that you are dating. That dynamic, again, was the problem. The dynamic was the problem. So now let's go into powerful reason number two. Oh, the last thing I'll mention with that story as well is that um, that was one of the breaking points for me or one of the re realizations after that, that I said, okay, I need to get in my masculine. I want to attract a real power partner, real relationship. And I started doing some deeper work to get into my masculine. And then shortly after that, I attracted uh, Antia. So that's the end of that story. So powerful reason number two, which is it gives you the illusion of security and control. So when you are chasing a man, when you're pursuing, when you're being your masculine, it can feel good. It can feel like, all right, things are happening. You know, we're texting together. We're, we're hanging out together. We're, you know, we're still dating. He's not dating anyone else right now. He's, he's with me, you know, we're together. So it can give you this illusion of security and control, this illusion that you two, you have control over the relationship that all you have to do, if you feel he's pulling away, you just have to reach out to him. You just have to text him. If he hasn't gotten back to you in a while, you just have to text him. And now you can get some of that, a shot of, of uh, dopamine of him responding to you. But it's an illusion because you think the dynamic is healthy when it's actually not. You think that it's going to go well, but it's actually perhaps on the way out. Most likely on the way out, the relationship is actually dying because of the re reasons we mentioned before. You're losing polarity. You're creating a dynamic that's not sustainable, that you don't actually enjoy. And so, and that he may be not enjoying also. Maybe he actually wants to be the masculine. He wants to take charge, but you're not giving him the space. We'll talk about that in a bit. So... Watch for those illusions um, and don't get caught in that trap of thinking just because things are happening and you initiated that, that it's fine. You know, you know, we're in the modern day and age, you know, women can take charge. Women can do uh, what they want. You know, women can make it happen. And so it's like this illusion of like power and strength and control. But actually, he's the one in control because he's the one that gets to respond. He's the one that gets to say yes or no. Um, and. And he's not having to do any of the work. So it is an illusion, an illusion of control. And unfortunately, our society has trapped us in this dynamic with a lot of with training women to be more in their masculine and and that it's that's a good thing and training men to be more in their feminine. And that's a good thing. And now we get into the 50 percent plus divorce rates and all the other problems we're having is with singles, you know, in the single world is a disaster and the hookup culture. This is a big contributed contributor and reason why we're in the state we are in modern uh, romance. So uh, it reminds me of a story as well um, of a woman who contacted us and she told us how she had just had this relationship where she felt she thought she found the guy, right? She thought she met him and she really wanted to get things going. You know, she was uh, older. She wanted to have kids, wanted to get things going. And so she wanted to really speed things up with him and really go really deep, really fast. And in fact, she recommended they start seeing counselors early on and uh, getting support to make because they were having some issues, but trying to make sure let's just let's just speed it up. We're going to make this happen. We're going to get it going. And uh, even like to visit their, his parents right away. So she was pushing for that and visit her, his parents and her to visit him to visit her parents, her to visit his parents. And just really on this, like, let's get this going because I got to have kids. Right. I want to get it going now. The problem was she was taking charge. She was forcing it. She was pushing it too fast, pushing, pushing, pushing. And of course, ended up bursting out the relationship in flames. And uh, and both of them, it became very dramatic, very, uh, you know, a lot of the, both of them felt like they weren't getting their needs met. And it just became a disaster again, because she was trying to take charge. She was trying to force things too quickly rather than letting him take the initiative, letting him take that charge. So not a good thing to do. Now, if you've struggled with this, trying to take charge, trying to get a man to come to you, and it's just not working, I highly recommend getting our Trigger His Desire program, which you can get, can get um, by going to TriggerHisDesire.com. Discover how to trigger his desire to make a man beg and plead to be with you. 
TriggerHisDesire.com. It's brand new. We're super excited about it. Get all the sexy techniques and principles that will actually trigger a man's brain to feel that lust and desire for you to want to chase. Um, and very advanced techniques. All you have to do is go to TriggerHisDesire.com. You can pick that up as well to really complement what we talk about here on this channel. So next, we're going to get into powerful secret number one. Reason number one, which is it trains you to be masculine. So when you're taking charge, when you're trying to be in control and chasing a man, pursuing, you're training yourself. That's who you are. That's how you get to be. It starts to affect your identity. You start to see yourself as I'm a take charge woman. I'm a masculine woman. I am. Um, I, I, I get to I create my reality. I do what I want. And just through your behavior, it trains it. And that now is setting a, uh, it's like locking in a stamp of a way of being that you're now going to have with men, with people, all people around you, people in your family, people, you know, with your children, whatever. You start to, to train yourself to be that rather than the opposite, which is how can you train yourself to actually receive? How can you train yourself to allow a man to take charge, to allow a man to lead gracefully for your pleasure? and for his pleasure and for your pleasure. How can you attract your knight in shining armor, your hero that wants to protect you, wants to provide for you, wants to save the day and make you happy because men want to make you happy. They just need to feel valued, that they are appreciated, that they are an asset to you, but they can't do that if you're the one that's been trained to take that role. So uh, this reminds me also of a client who, before she came to us, she was really struggling with, being trained in her masculine. You know, she was in the corporate culture. She was an achiever, very successful. The problem was that she had brought that into her romantic life. And she was even taking trainings and courses that were really teaching her to uh, pursue guys. You know, she had listened to things even saying like, you know, it's okay these days for the man to pay for the dinner. You know, you should allow him to pay. Or I mean, for you to pay for the dinner. You should, you should, it's okay to pay for the meal. Of course, ruins attraction, chemistry, it's just gone. But that's what she was getting trained in. And so she had been this masculine uh, energy with guys. And of course, just one relationship after the other, fizzle, 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 fizzle out. And she was feeling frustrated. She was anxious. She's like, why is this happening? I was. She was also feeling like she was getting older, wanting to have kids. And so she came to us, me and Antia, she hired us as coaches, hired Antia as a coach and started shifting that around, started learning what it meant to be the queen what it meant to be in her feminine pleasure. And she started attracting guys who were taking that initiative and she attracted her husband and they ended up getting married and they now have a beautiful baby. So that is the power of shifting it around. Even if you have been trained in the past, that can all be re re reversed. It's not your fault because again, society is often ch 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 uh, teaching men and women to be this way, uh, especially women. And it's really creating a lot of damage, but you can um, reverse it with the right coaching, the right education, the right training and the commitment. And you can create what you're always meant to have, which is a happy, harmonious, long lasting relationship with a man who cherishes you, who values you, who treats you like you are just diamonds to him, who feels you're the most beautiful woman in the, in the planet because he gets to be your man. He gets to be that for you. He gets to bring his masculine energy to the table in its full glory to be your king. So that's the power for, of that. So I also love to hear from you today. Comment below what has been your experience with pursuing a man or not pursuing a man or having a man pursuing you. Uh, I'd love to hear that for you. Have you had a struggle with that? What has it been like when a man is pursuing you? What does that feel like to you? What is What has that dynamic been like for you? I'd love to hear that in the comments below. Finally, we have a bonus, secret bonus I want to give you today. Reason, which is it gives him no space to pursue you. When you're chasing a man, it gives him no space to pursue you. Again, think of masculine feminine dynamics like a dance. In any dance, you could only have one lead and one follow at any time. Now, if you're leading, he can't lead by definition. Now, he, you're the leader. He has to follow by definition. If you want him to lead, then you have to follow. You have to give him that role. And so... If you're taking the lead, you give him no space to do it. If you're chasing, you give him no space to do it. So a lot of this is a practice of saying, no, I don't want that. I don't want to be that way. And I'm going to become who I need to become until a man is taking that role. And that still means putting yourself out there. You can still go out, be social, meet guys. You can be on online dating sites. And you could even, you could even, you could even reach out to guys if you're just 
reaching out from a social place, but not from a romantic interest place. If you're just a social butterfly, that's totally fine. There's a difference between being a social butterfly and hitting on a man. That's when you enter your masculine. That's when you're trying to get something from him. So allowing this to where a man can actually take those actions with you and be the, be the chaser, now you can actually give him that role and he will take that role. And that's the new standard you're, you're setting for yourself, that that's all you will accept and you'll become the most feminine, most glorious, most beautiful, queenly woman you can be until you create that because that's what you want. That's the kind of life you want. You want a life where men are catering to you, quality men. They're coming to you. They're, they're worshiping you and wanting to be your hero and provider. So this also reminds me of a story when I first met Antia. She, um, we had been dating for about three months and then she had to actually move to San Francisco. And she was saying, I'm moving to San Francisco. And that within me presented a challenge. You know, do I let this relationship go and she's just gonna go to San Francisco or do I follow her? And I decided to actually take that initiative and follow her to San Francisco. Yeah, I was going there for other reasons. Um, and I had business goals also that I want to accomplish there. But it was a big part of it was me wanting to continue to be with her, not wanting this to end. So I moved as well from Hawaii to San Francisco. And, um, and we continued dating and I got to chase her in that sense. And of course, proposed to her several months after that. Um, very shortly after that, actually, I think it was only a month and a half or so that I proposed to her after we moved. So very powerful, but I could only do that if she was giving me the space to chase her, not if she was constantly chasing me and saying, where are you going? Or I'm going to stay here. Or, I'm texting me all the time. I couldn't have been able to do that.